Good morning, everybody. Lovely to see you here this morning. Welcome to those who are visiting us today. You're most welcome here. Uh, it's lovely to see you. Uh, and to those who are joining us on our live streaming channel, hello. And those who are catching up with us on YouTube, uh, thank you very much for wanting to join us here for our service of Holy Communion on this, the 16th Sunday after Trinity. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Almighty and merciful God, who in the days of old gave to this land the benediction of thy holy church, withdraw not, we pray, your favor from us, but so correct what is amiss and supply what is lacking, that we may more and more bring forth fruit to thy glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please take up your red hymn book and turn to the hymn number 324. We sing, God whose almighty word. take up your green book of common prayer we turn to page 201 we say together the collect for purity almighty God to whom all hearts are open all desires known and from whom no secrets are hidden cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us sit or kneel for our confession. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ says. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy on us. 
and write these your laws in our hearts. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to intercede for us in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us then confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace. Father, you come to meet us when we return to you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Jesus, you died on the cross for our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Holy Spirit, you give us life and peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned in thought and word and deed and in what we have left undone. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may walk in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on us, pardons and delivers you from all your sins, confirms and strengthens you in all goodness, and keeps you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We stand to say the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Collect for the 16th Sunday after Trinity. O Lord, hear the prayers of your people who call upon you, and grant that they may know both, they may both perceive and know what things they ought to do and also may have grace and power faithfully to fulfill them. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for our readings and the psalm. reading from the book of Proverbs, chapter 1, beginning at verse 20. Wisdom cries out in the street. In the squares, she raises her voice. At the busiest corner, she cries out. At the entrance of the city gates, she speaks. How long, O oh simple ones, will you love being simple? How long will you scoffers delight in their scoffing and fools hate knowledge? Give heed to my reproof. I will pour out my thoughts to you. I will make my words known to you, because I have called and you have refused. I have stretched out my hand and no one heeded, and because you have ignored all my counsel and would have none of my reproof, I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when panic strikes you when panic strikes you like a storm and your calamity comes like a whirlwind, when distress, distress and anguish come upon you, then they will call upon me. But I will not answer. They will seek me diligently, but will not find me because they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. I did not choose the fear of the Lord would have none of my counsel and despised all my reproof. Therefore, they shall eat the fruit of their way and be sated with their own devices. For waywardness kills the simple, 
and complacency, and complacency of fools destroys them. But those who listen to me will be secure and will live at ease with that dread of disaster. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is psalm number 19. You'll find this on page 611 in the back of the Green Book of Common Prayer, Psalm 19. Andrew will lead us in the first half of each verse. We respond following the red dot. That's psalm 19, page 611. The heavens are telling the glory of God. And the firmament proclaims his handiwork. One day pours out its song to another. And one night unfolds knowledge to another. They have neither speech nor language. And their voices are not heard. Yet their sound has gone out into all lands. And their words to the ends of the world. In them has he set a tabernacle for the sun that comes forth as a bridegroom out of his chamber and rejoices as a champion to run his course. It goes forth from the end of the heavens and runs to the very end again. And there is nothing hid from his seat. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey dripping from the honeycomb. By them also is your servant taught. And in keeping them there is great reward. Who can tell how often they offend? O oh, cleanse me from my secret faults. Keep your servant also from presumptuous sins, lest they get dominion over me. So shall I be undefiled and innocent of great offence. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Epistle of James. Chapter 3, beginning at verse 1. Not many of you should become teachers, brothers, sisters. You know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness. All of us make many mistakes. Anyone who makes no mistakes in speaking is perfect, able to keep body in check with a bridle. If we put bits into mouths of horses to make them obey us, we guide their bodies or look at chips they are large, it takes strong winds to drive them. They are guided by a water where a of pilot directs. Tongue is a member, it boasts of great exploits. How great as a forest is set ablaze by a fire. Tongue is a fire. Tongue is placed among our members as a word of inequity. It stains body, sets on fire the cycle of nature, is set on fire by hell. Every species of beast, bird, of reptile, sea creature can be tamed, has been tamed by human species. No one can tame tongue, a restless evil, full of poison. Witted we bless Lord, Father witted. We curse those who are made in likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessing, cursing. Brothers, sisters, this ought not to be so. Does a spring pour forth from the same opening? brought fresh, brackish water. Can a fig tree, brothers, sisters, yield olives or grapevine? Figs, no more can salt water yield fresh. This is word of Lord. Thanks be to God. We 
We take up our red hymn books and turn to the hymn number 34. We stand to sing, I worship the King, O glorious above. Gospel of our Saviour Christ according to Saint Mark, chapter 8, beginning at verse 27. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus went on with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi, and on the way he asked his disciples, Who do people say that I am? And they answered him, John the Baptist, and others Elijah, and still others one of the prophets. He asked them, but who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, You are the Messiah. And Jesus sternly ordered them not to tell anyone about him. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. 
But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. The Epistle of James, writing to the faithful in the days and weeks and months after the crucifixion, resurrection, and ascension of our Lord. And he's instructing them and guiding them in the ways of the faith, clarifying for them many of the um, difficulties and the um, confusions that they had. That tells you something. Yeah? The Holy Spirit came upon the disciples in the upper room and they manifested great miracles. And yet, even so close to these events, there are people who come to faith and they need to be guided and corrected. This particular passage talks to us about the, the unbridled tongue. And of course we know that it's not the tongue itself, but it's what's behind it. Yeah? It's what comes from the, from the brain, from the mind, from the subconscious. These are the things that, that lead us astray. Uh, this idea of the little rudder and the tongue is, is really quite a powerful one. We know how small a rudder can be to turn even the most huge of super tankers. Although it does take them a few days actually to head in a new direction, they do get there eventually. Do we have a rudder? Do we have a rudder? And I'm not thinking of the subconscious, I'm not thinking of the brain, I'm not thinking of the nature and nurture type of equation. I'm thinking of something else. Proverbs. Wisdom cries out in the street. Yeah, wisdom cries out in the street. Wisdom, the one who guides and knows the direction. Wisdom, the one who carries us through life and leads us inexorably towards heaven. Unless we ignore her, unless we forget she's there, wisdom cries out. Did you notice in the hymn, uh, the first hymn, it said uh, in the last verse, um, the Holy Trinity, wisdom, love and power. Yeah? Wisdom, love and power. These are the persons of the Trinity. Wisdom, the Holy Spirit, love, Christ, and power, the Father. Yeah? The Holy Trinity. Wisdom, love, power. Wisdom cries out in the street. In the squares she raises her voice. Listen. Listen. You who think you know everything. You who think you know nothing, listen, everyone. How long, O oh simple ones, will you love being simple? How long? <laughs> How long will you, simple ones, love being simple? How long will you, those who, who think you have all knowledge, scoff at those who know less than you? Heed my reproof. I will pour out my thoughts to you. I will pour them out. This is our rudder, the wisdom, the Holy Spirit. We come every Sunday to worship in a church dedicated to the Virgin Mary. 
This church is named for her. And she personifies wisdom. She is the mother who sits behind the throne on which her son Christ sits. She is the mother who whispers in his ear and guides him. She is the one who offers him insights. Yeah? Offers Christ's insights. This, as really, suggests something about the nature and the value and the life of Christ which we often miss. We often miss the idea that Christ actually grew in knowledge and wisdom. It says in the beginning of the Gospels, when he was young, he grew in knowledge. Yeah? He learned from his mother, who was wisdom. We think that the gifts that were brought to the birth of Christ, the gold or silver, and the gold, uh, frankincense and myrrh, uh, were actually physical treasures. But what if, what if they were actually wisdom? What if they were wisdom and they were given to her and she gave them to him and he gives them to us because he asked the Father to send the Holy Spirit onto us who believe. When we send, when we receive the Holy Spirit, we receive wisdom, compassion, love, charity, humility, nurture. We receive these things. These are our rudder. These are the things that guide us. But we have to allow it to operate. Yeah? If we have a rudder we have installed and we use that to guide us, we will crash. We will bump into the rocks because we will steer the wrong way if we use the rudder God gives us then we will not crash. We will not steer the wrong way. We will not become as those who foolishly think themselves knowledgeable. When we actually fulfill our responsibility in our faith to be capable of living by the wisdom of God. We don't need ever to ask the question, what do I need to do now? Because we will know. We will know what is the right thing to do when it is the right time to do it. We will know. Because wisdom guides us. Wisdom steers us to the right solution. We don't need to create tasks for ourselves. God gives them to us and at the same time the capacity to achieve them and at the same time knowledge that it is happening right now. That's the way the Spirit works in those of the faith. And when we capture that, we live by that, we find ourselves living the Gospel of Christ. Wisdom cries out in the street are we the ones to listen? Are we the ones to follow? Are we, and all those who love Christ, the ones who will do the right thing? Pray God we do. Amen. Would you please take up your Green Book of Common Prayer and turn to page 205. We stand to declare our faith in the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, 
was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us sit or kneel for our prayers. We call upon your name, O Lord. Incline your ear to our prayer. Lord, you set your cross before us as the pathway to salvation. You give your church courage to embrace sacrificial living. We thank you for all who have led us in the faith, who have sacrificed of themselves and given us what you gave them love of you. May we never be ashamed to proclaim you as Lord. Lord, hear us. Lord, you graciously hear us. Lord, you set your cross before all nations as a challenge to power and force. Give courage to all who stand for justice and peace. We pray for those who defend themselves against injustice, invasion, cruelty, harm, prejudice, and hatred. May all who govern serve their people with wisdom and humility. Lord, hear us. Lord, you graciously hear us. Lord, you set your cross before all people as a sign of truth and understanding. Bless and guide all those who teach and inspire the minds of those who are young in life and in faith. We pray for those children who will shortly prepare for their confirmation. We pray for those who are brought for baptism. And we pray for those who teach and guide. May we set their feet on firm foundations of godly and fruitful lives. Lord, hear us. Lord, you graciously hear us. Lord, you set your cross before us as a symbol of hope and love. You give courage to all those who are anxious or fearful in their sufferings. And so we pray for all who are ill, particularly those known to us, and especially those for whom no one else is praying, that they may know the presence of your love and strength and comfort and healing. May those who are weary be sustained by your word. Lord, hear us. Lord, you graciously hear us. Lord, you hold your cross before us at the hour of our death. Hear us as we remember with love all those who have died and whose anniversary falls at this time. We commend into your care those who have died recently and we pray for those who mourn, those whose grief is raw, and particularly we pray for all those who will die today unprepared. Lord, do not be ashamed of us when you come in your glory. Lord, hear us. Lord, you graciously hear us. And so we gather together our personal prayers, those we carry in our hearts and minds. 
the prayers we have been asked to pray. The prayers of those who have visited this church in the past week. and the prayers of those who can find no words with which to pray. And we offer them to God. Merciful Father, accept these our prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please would you stand. Peace to you from God, our Heavenly Father. Peace to you from his Son, Jesus Christ, who is our peace. Peace to you from the Holy Spirit, the life giver. The peace of the triune God be always with you. Let us offer to each other a sign of peace. During the singing of our next hymn, the stewards will move among you to gather in your donations for the work of our church. In the red hymn book number 597, we sing, Take my life and let it be. If it is your custom in your home church to receive the sacrament, you are most welcome to do so here today, irrespective of your tradition. We use gluten-free bread. We continue our service on page 208. Please keep a tab in page 207. We go back to that prayer later. Page 208. Be present, be present, Lord Jesus Christ, our risen High Priest, 
Make yourself known in the breaking of bread. Amen. Amen. Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, Therefore let, let us celebrate, celebrate the feast. feast. The Lord is here. His Spirit, Spirit is, is with, with us. us. Lift up your hearts. We lift Stand them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, right to give, to give our, our thanks and praise. praise. Father, almighty and ever-living God, at all times and in all places, it is right to give you thanks and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord. You have revealed your glory as the glory of your Son and of the Holy Spirit, three persons equal in majesty, undivided in splendor, yet one Lord, one God, ever to be worshipped and adored. And so, with all your people, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, Father, the creator and sustainer of all things. You made us in your own image. Male and female, you created us. Even when we turned away from you, you never ceased to care for us. But in your love and mercy, you freed us from the slavery of sin, giving your only begotten Son to become man and suffer death on the cross to redeem us. He made there the one complete and all-sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. He instituted and in his holy gospel commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until he comes again. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks to you, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, with this bread and this cup, we do as Christ your Son commanded. We remember his passion and death. We celebrate his resurrection and ascension, and we look for the coming of his kingdom. Accept through him, our great High Priest, this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts, grant by the power of the life-giving Spirit, that we may be made one in your holy church and partakers of the body and blood of your Son, that he may dwell in us and we in him. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, our Father who art, art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. We, we be many of one, one body, for we, for we all share, share in, in the one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Draw near with faith 
receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Remember that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving. We return to the prayer on page 207. We do we not presume to come to this your table, table merciful Lord, Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. The body and blood of Christ are given for you.
God of mercy, through our sharing in this holy sacrament, you make us one body in Christ. Fashion us in his likeness here on earth, that we may share his glorious company in heaven, where he lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding, feeding us with the spiritual, spiritual food of the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Please take up your red hymn books and turn to the hymn number 518. We sing, I the Lord of Sea and Sky. Just a couple of notices to give. Uh, first of all, the 
Confirmation classes will commence this Thursday at 5 p.m. That's the 19th of September, and then the 26th of September, and then the 3rd of October. The confirmation service will take place here in church on the Sunday morning of the 13th of October. So anybody who wishes their young children between the ages of 11 and 13 to be confirmed, please contact me straight away. Uh, the harvest service is on Sunday the 6th of October uh, and the decoration of the church for the harvest service will take place on the Saturday the 5th from 2 p.m. from 2 p.m. Uh, and donations of produce uh, are, are most welcome. And for those who haven't already become aware, our new bookmarks are on sale over there in the prayer corner, um, two euros per bookmark or the full set for 10, for 20, sorry, 20. <laughs> yeah. Um, and for those who are uh, visiting us, please do stay behind. We have tea, coffee and cake at the back of church and we'd love to have a chance to talk with you. Thank you very much for those who have been following us on our live streaming channel. God bless you. And those who have caught up with us on YouTube, I hope you stay well. Thank you very much. God, the Holy Trinity, make you strong in faith and love, defend you on every side, and guide you in truth and peace. And so the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is with you and will remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.